Edward's Midnight Run. Edward had just arrived at the big yard at the end of the line. He was exhausted. He had just brought his last train of the day up from the docks and was looking forward to a good night's rest. He left his trucks in the sidings and puffed away back towards the main line and home. As he arrived, he found Gordon and Henry. He wanted to say hello, but all didn't seem well. Pa, and you think that's an excuse, said Gordon to Henry. The big green engine was working hard all day and was quite puffed out. What's all this? asked Edward. Henry here replaces me on one express run while I'm in the works and then acts like he's been overworked. I'd say it's laziness. I already have plenty of work to do on my own and then thanks to you breaking down and Rebecca and James stuck with their own, I had to waste several hours running to the other railway and back to help you. I didn't even finish my big job today. Sir Topham Hat won't be happy with me when he finds out. And just what job was that? My weekly heavy goods, bound for the mainland, Henry replied. And that's no one's fault but your own, butted in Gordon. He was certain Henry was being lazy. But Henry, and now Edward too, knew Gordon was full of it. Sir Topham Hatt will not miss one measly goods train. He won't, said Edward, but the other railway will. And then they'll be cross, and Sir Topham Hatt will find out quite quickly. Never mind him, Edward. I'll just have to take it tomorrow. When was it due there? This evening, Henry groaned. Oh, but no one will notice him missing until the morning. Nevertheless, he won't be there until tomorrow night at the earliest. I feel so bad I couldn't make it, but I'm so worn out after today. I just couldn't. <sighs> Sir Topham Hatt won't be happy with me at all. I see, pondered Edward. He thought for a moment, then he had an idea. Excuse me, you two, he said. I, I, I forgot to take care of something in the yard. Uh, don't wait up. I'll probably just stay at nap for tonight. Goodbye. Edward had had an idea. It took some convincing, but his driver and fireman agreed. Next, they spoke to Sir Topham Hatt. You mean, Henry never took it, he scowled. Edward explained about the express, and he told Sir Topham Hatt what he had in mind. You, Edward, stay up all night just to take Henry's goods train. Nonsense. Henry should have done it himself, and he will in the morning. But sir, you should have seen how exhausted he was. It's really no trouble for me. Well then, Sir Topham Hath thought. He paused impressively. Well, that's very kind of you, Edward. Well done. Thank you, sir, replied Edward, and he raced off to find Henry's trucks. He found the long train waiting in the yard. His fireman coupled him on, and after a bit of wheel slip, he was off into the night. The journey started nicely. The air was warm and the moon shone above. He chuffed happily through his station and made his way for Gordon's Hill. Make a run for it, Edward, called out the driver as he gave Edward all the power and steam he could. The hill proved difficult. This is Henry's train. After all, Edward strained as his wheels began to slip. Ever so carefully, he dropped just the right amount of sand onto the line below. Not too much and not too little. Soon enough, Edward had reached the top. With one last big effort, he heaved the first half of the train over, and the second half followed gracefully. Well done, boy! Well done! cried the driver. Edward just smiled as he raced happily down. From there, everything went swimmingly. And barely any time, Edward raced across the bridge and onto the other railway. I must say, huffed Edward as he stopped for water, it does feel good to be back on the mainland after so long. I'd never dare entertain an idea like leaving Sodor, but tonight... Tonight's just what an engine like me needs after a while. I was hesitant about this at first, chimed in the fireman. As was I, agreed the driver. But you know, Edward, you're right. And I'm not sure what Gordon was on about either. The water out this way is the coolest I've had in ages. Just perfectly refreshing. And you're all topped off, said the fireman as he closed the cap and made his way back into the cab. Come along now, no time to waste. But they wouldn't be going anywhere just yet. Just then, the signalman approached. If I might ask... Where are you lot off to tonight? Bridlington, replied the fireman. What's happening? Our mail train has gotten itself stuck up a hill just down the line, and we're short a banker. You might be here a while. Did you say you need a banker? asked Edward. Oh, ho, ho, ho. leave it to me. 
Can an engine like that even get up a hill? Questioned the signalman, much less help another engine up. Edward's driver and fireman nearly burst into laughter. Edward, bank another engine up a hill? Are you kidding me? Just what I thought. Of course he can. Just don't get in his way. The signalman was dumbfounded. As Edward arrived, he found an engine and its mail van stranded halfway up. Hello, peeped Edward. I've come to push. You, said the engine. Yes, me. I thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm not used to such a positive response. I'll take any help I can get, chuckled the engine. I've been here for hours. It's such a pain to get help out here. Well, don't you worry, smiled Edward. I've dealt with hills much taller than this. We'll have you up in no time. And with a big heave, Edward bashed into the brake van and began to push. He pushed, and the little engine pulled. He thought it would take forever, but he didn't know Edward. With one big effort, the mail train shot over the hill. He started off so quickly he barely had any time to say thank you. But he made sure he was heard. Thank you, he shouted. Don't mention it. You did good tonight, old boy, smiled the driver. Now come on, we've got a train to deliver. Yes, of course, puffed Edward. Just as the sun had risen, Edward steamed in, tired but feeling very proud of himself. And just who are you? twitched an inspector. I've brought the goods from Sodor, replied Edward. The inspector stared. Oh, so now you arrive? I do believe that was due last night. I shall be telephoning your fat controller at once. I'm terribly sorry about the delay, sir, interrupted Edward. Please do accept my apology. I'll just get this to the yard and be out of your way quicker than I arrived. The inspector raised a finger, but before he could get in another word, that's just what Edward did. He dropped his trucks, and with clearance from the signalman, he was back on the main line before anyone had noticed him. The journey back took all day, and Edward was beyond exhausted, but he didn't mind. He had helped out Henry, and that's all that mattered. Edward, cried Henry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You really got me out of a jam. Oh, it was no bother. You did a little more than you know. After you told Sir Topham Hatt about how tired I was, he lightened my load greatly today. He did? asked Edward. But who covered my work? Well, said a voice, look who finally arrived home. Oh, Gordon, were you overworked today? I would say so, he grumbled, to put it lightly. And I still have this lot to take up to Wellsworth before I can... Say no more, Edward cut in. You just leave those here and head on back to the shed. I'll take care of them. Oh, thank you, Edward, but don't bother. It's no problem, Gordon. After all, doing a little extra work is nothing for a real hard-working engine. In that case, I can manage, said Gordon, as he puffed off towards Wellsworth and Edward towards the shed for a well-earned rest.
Thank you.